Okay, so hello everyone and welcome to this October class in acrylic. I'm going to be working um, working with this uh, reference photo of how to paint the blue tit. And um, we did it in oil, but I also wanna show my acrylic painters how to go about creating this abstract background by layering um, the acrylic paint. Um, for the picture for the class, I actually painted an, an acrylic painting. And so I just wanted to um, show you because I think it's a lot of fun when you paint with acrylic because the layers dry really quick and then you can, um, you know, pull out all these abstract shapes. So you can do it with oil and you can do it with acrylic. But one of the benefits to doing it in acrylic is that it does um, dry fast so you can apply more layers um, on top quicker. But if you have a blow dryer, um, you can get it to dry in places, you know, in Canada where I used to paint in acrylic all the time, it took longer. So I would go and blow dryer, blow dry each layer to speed things up. Whereas with oil, you really can't do a whole lot to speed up. You have to just do the wet on wet. So I use mainly a golden paint and I like using golden because it has a lot of pigment, but I've also, I really like these um, Liquitex paints, the heavy body acrylic professional grade from, I just picked these up at Michael's. So I like both of those brands because they, they're very highly pigmented. And when you're dealing with acrylic, you know, you want more pigment because you're already kind of, that's the one thing oil has a little bit heavier quality pigment. Um, it doesn't, it's thicker and it shows up brighter. Whereas with acrylic, you buy a cheaper brand, you know, you're at a disadvantage, so. Um, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get a big brush. I've got some brushes out, but I want to get, these are just inexpensive brushes, these Simply Simmons. This is a one, one inch, it says, but Simply Simmons, you can get them online. You can get them at Jerry's Art Arama or I think Amazon. And then I like to use these little, mine's really messy. Um, has a lot of dried acrylic paint on it, but I like to use these. You'll notice today, I, my this is a stay wet palette. So these are, I've got my paint out here, but I, I once you make a mess of your palette, like this, this is from yesterday, so it's a bit dry, but I prefer to do a lot of my blending and mixing on one of these, because then I can clean it off and use it again and again and not mess up this paper palette too much. The Stay Wet palette is a paper that's kind of breathable. It lets um, water from this sponge, that yellow sponge, which is wet, keep continually coming up into the paint. So your paints are getting um, continually fed some water from below. And then I have one of these little spray bottles from the art store that I give a little mist and these are good because they, they spray a really fine mist so that you're not getting like a lot of, like a, a lot of water on it, but you're evenly misting everything. So in the initial layer, um, one of the things you can do is get some, this is a bottle of um, just liquid gloss medium. I, I think I lost the label somehow. I kind of, refill them and stuff from a bigger bottle. So that's just a, that's probably why the label's gone, but it's just like a Liquitex gloss medium. And I like the gloss medium, but you can buy it in matte. And so I'll take some of this gloss medium, make sure your brush is wet. And I'm gonna get some of this transparent brown oxide and a little bit of this ultramarine blue just to get a kind of a base kind of gray. So you're probably thinking, well, you know, you could just use water to do that. And you can. Um, water, 
works, but what it does do is this is what the paint is made up of is this clear gel liquid medium. It is kind of what the paint is made up of. So it won't start to separate the paint. You can see the consistency is really good. I'm gonna show you what it looks like if I just were to use some of the paint with just water. And I do do this because I, you know, I want to get going. I can't find my medium. I just want to get that layer done. And I'll show you what it looks like. So you'll notice right away, it kind of goes on. The water's getting repelled by the canvas a little and it's the paint's becoming a little bit muddy in color versus this has got a nice smooth consistency and um, and it's it doesn't bubble or separate. So that's just the main difference. I mean, obviously you can kind of wipe this and get it into your canvas still, but um, this also creates a layer on top of your canvas and then it gives your paint the next layers um, go on a lot smoother. So that's another reason. And sometimes if you're doing a large area, what you can do is kind of a hybrid of the two. You know, you got a little water and a little medium and you just, you know, get it on there. But the water definitely starts to um, dull the paint. It kind of separates it. Like I can just see the difference. I added a bit of water to the medium here and this has so much more vividness to it. And what the water did was it kind of um, it really did dull it down. So I'm kind of learning something too here that it's worth using the liquid medium to, to get a cover down on your canvas if, you, if you're if you working like this, on a painting like this, where you're definitely showing off those layers. So that's good to know. Okay, so now I've got basically I've got a I've got this whole gray wash over my painting. And I am just making sure this is all fitting in my camera. This is a size 10 by 10. And uh, so it's a little bigger. And there, that's a little better. Okay, so um, now when you're thinking, you're looking at this background, um, there's tons and tons of branches. So one of the things I, I wanna do is get down some of those marks, make some of those branch marks that you can like later keep or um, later delete, but at least they're there so that you can, um, so that when we start painting these negative shapes, um, you'll have a lot to work with. So what I wanna do is I kinda of wanna come up with something kind of that reddy brown. And then you see some branches that are, have hints of blue in them, lighter brown. So the lighter brown we can add the paint to later, but for this, I wanna get a lot of those kind of brown browns down and You'll notice in my acrylic painting, I have lots of those little brown and variations of brown. So this is a more of a blue mix with the brown. And then this is more of a reddy brown. So, you, you know, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. I'm, I'm going to be mixing it up a little. So, okay. So now I want to just, I'm thinking I'll get some of this red oxide and you can use your your mixing tray like this and you can even use a paper plate you know that has a waxy finish don't use those paper plates that are just like paper paper with no finish just something that you can mix on that you don't mind you know getting rid of it just saves you a lot of mess making on your main palette when you're doing the larger things when you're doing the smaller things I don't mind mixing on this, but for the big areas where you're really 
putting on, you know, large swaths of color, um, I feel like it's a good idea to, to use one of these. It helps me anyways. So I'm using a little red oxide and uh, a little touch of brown oxide. And uh, I could add a little more of that liquid medium. I'll just put a pile of it in the corner of my tray here, right up here. And then I can just scoop some in because it does thin down your paint, the color. Uh, for this, I don't mind because we're just drawing sticks. So the first one I want to put in is kind of where, you know, where the little bird is. So I'm going to just kind of go along and let's see, it's kind of over here. It's a very straight up and down uh, stick in the, in the picture, but I'll put, maybe put it on a bit of more of an angle. My first painting, I went really straight up and down with it. And then I'm going to draw that main stick that the bird is standing on. And they don't have to be perfect because you're, it's like building a puzzle for yourself. You can have lots of these. So I'm just gonna get a little more brown oxide in there and I'll put a few and there's gonna be lots of them. So they, you know, you just kind of have to start. It's at first it feels a little weird because you're just drawing these lines on these that are going to be, you know, your, the, all the different marks in the background that are in the reference photo. It's like a busy, busy background, but so you can have just sort of kind of make sticky, stick-like marks to start with, and it gets you kind of warmed up into it. Um, And I'm just going to put this in for a sec. Okay, so I'm um, looking at this reference photo here. You see there's sticks that go across. There's, they're going every which way. So you really can't go too far wrong, but for, for now I've got enough down that I feel, you know, I've got that part working. I'm just gonna wanna draw the bird on next because then I can continue with the background. So, all right, so we've got this really pretty little Tipmouse. I'm going to just put my reference photo here and I'm going to just sketch it out and I can just use a little brown oxide and some of this ultramarine blue. And you can use a little bit of that liquid medium if you want. So here's the little stick where his little feet are. And um, I'm looking at that negative space between the bottom of this stick and then there's his little belly and down here. So there's a little triangle of space in there that's kind of about here. And you look at the angle, how his little belly comes down goes down and then you got the tail and then it comes up 
you have a little foot there and a little claw there. Feet, claw, I always get them confused when I'm painting. And so I'm kind of looking at the angles, it kind of comes up, goes up, straightens, and then you're actually seeing, I think, a bit of this, this part here all wrapping around. He's really twisted his head around. And so I'm looking at angles like this when I'm drawing this angle here and there. So I'm just gonna sketch that out for a minute and then Paying attention to the angles. And it's got the cutest little beak. And then there's this angle here. You can't go too far wrong with this one. It's so cute. So we got the little eye here. Okay, so you kind of, you get the feeling of where, where this little bird is. And then once you get it drawn on, you can, you know, tweak some of the, the drawing. So I think that's good. Now at least we know whereabouts our little bird is. And now I can go back to putting some more branch shapes down. You wanna get them down in the beginning um, because you're not gonna go, you don't wanna go back in later when your drawing is all done. I mean, you can add more later, don't get me wrong, but I wanna add a bunch in the beginning. And if you're regularly painting in oil, this is kind of a good exercise for you, even to think about how, you are, how you're gonna build with oil next time you paint. This mix here, I'm just using a little of the brown oxide with some ultramarine blue, so it's a little bit grayer. And some of the marks don't have to be complete. It's, you're just creating all those kind of movements and marks that are in that reference photo. Some of the branches are coming across. There's a lot up here. And then another thing I like to do is I'll kind of exaggerate some of this, but I see a bit of sky coming through here. I see some green, you know, coming through here. So you're seeing bits of color coming through. So I'm gonna add a few colors into my wash because later that's gonna be really nice. So I'm gonna take you know, you can take a little bit of um, the ultramarine blue, instead of adding more brown to it, just make it a little more blue. And just, I've got that um, medium in there, a little bit of that medium, so it's like a transparent wash. And I'll put, see how I'm just lightly 
adding some of that to that background wash. And you can't go too far wrong because this is just the thinnest layer on, on this painting. So you, you really, you can paint right over it if you, if you didn't like it. And um, I'm just thinking what other colors I could throw in there. You could get just some of that, um, maybe some just some more red oxide and make it more autumn-y looking in the background. So I'm just, see how thin that goes, especially if you're, you're using some of that medium, you're just glazing on some nice, nice color. Um, you can go with bolder colors, you know, you could, you could add a little, you know, cause it's fall, you could add a little uh, red oxide and a little, you know, touch of quinacridone red, see that makes a nice clear glaze of a more ready, oh, sorry, I didn't get it out of the camera, a clear glaze of that red oxide and you're getting a nice warm, warm brown, can even add a little more red. I mean, if you want, you can go bolder, but I'm just, these are giving, this gives you an idea of how, and you know, you're getting all these nice colors underneath that are nice in themselves to look at. You know, you don't, you can't go too far wrong. And um, you can go with any, any color you want. You could add a little bit, I've got a little bit of this Indian yellow here and you could add a little, into that Indian yellow in there. But you can see how it's developing some interesting, interesting layers. And you could try, you know, something like this cobalt blue up here and okay so maybe some brown oxide but now you've got this nice mix of warm undertones that you're gonna use later um, to paint in it's like negative painting, you know, you're painting in sky holes and you're doing things that are different. And um, you've got all these kind of patterns going through here of light and dark. So you can just pick out some shapes later, but now at least you have all these nice colors here and the value is, is deep and dark enough that those will make for good branches later. So. That's my favorite thing to do with acrylic paint. And um, is work on those layers. So uh, now I'm going to, I'm just gonna work a little bit on this bird and get it kind of filled in. So I'm gonna use for the, the, the yellow part, um, I'll use a little bit of this, um, Cad yellow, cad yellow light and some of this red oxide. See how you get this nice warm color and then add a little hint of viridian to it. A little more red oxide, a little more viridian and the cad yellow light. And you're gonna just paint on some of that. That'll give you a nice warm undertone. There's a little twig here, but we can put that back on. I'll just paint over it for now. So I'm just blocking in wherever there's that yellow. 
and this will give you a nice warm yellow. If you use too much green, it gets too cold, but there are cold and warm yellows in this bird, all in the same, all in the same bird. <laughs> so our first mix is cad yellow light and transparent red oxide. So now I'm going to mix up something a little bit cooler. So I'll do it right here. So there's some more yellow, cad yellow light. And for this one, I'm gonna add a little bit more Viridian. So you can see you've got more of a cooler, a cooler yellow, more greeny. And I'm just gonna put on a few of those feather marks. And oh, by the way, I'm using, this is a number six flat. I probably normally go with a number four, but you know, the bigger the brush, the looser the painting. So you'll see I left this dark here and I just put in some of those lighter feathers that I see there. So leaving that dark, putting on the lighter feathers so I get that nice, you know, shape of the, the bird. So I'm gonna leave that for now and let it dry. And now I'm gonna move on and, and paint in our little bird's head. So I'm moving down a size to this number two version. And this is also these Artist Loft brushes from Michaels. Uh, they work well for what I use them for on this canvas. So to get this white um, on the bird's face, uh, I want to get some warm white so I can show off the, the white, white feathers that are there. And in this reference photo, I got it from, you know, Pixbay or something. So it's a royalty free photo. And I'm gonna say it's a little over, you know, it looks great, but it's that white is really bright. So they must have upped the exposure or something to get it to really pop. So I'm just gonna assume there's a little more warmth in there. And I'm gonna mix up my warm white mix, which is white. Viridian green and brown oxide, and you get a nice warm white. And what you're looking at here is you want to paint in those shapes that you see. So you're looking at those angles. See that angle there? Another angle here. Paying attention even to the little beak angles because those are what make this tip most really. Um, cute. So I'm just going to make sure I get that in there. And there's even a little bit of white that comes in between where his head's turning around. So I'm just going to kind of block in that white using that warm white color. Get that shape in there. like that. Just a little bit of white down here on those feathers you can block in while you're using that white. And you can block in the blue. I use a bit of this ultramarine blue and some cobalt blue just to get something kind of vibrant. It's very vibrant blue. So I'm just using straight, nothing mixed in. And I apply the paint fairly thick. You know, I'm not, it's, it's definitely for acrylic paint. You know, I'm not thinly laying it on. I'm putting it thick, pretty thick on there. And that helps to have a little bit more of a thick layer so that I can kind of blend a little. Or it dries out really dries up pretty fast. So I'm looking at those shapes. This is going to be lighter. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to that mix, a little more cobalt blue. 
And I'm gonna just get that light bit in the front of his, of his little head there going. And it goes to dark, so get a little more white in there. And using the edge of my brush, just kind of blending that in. And there's a few lighter feathers along the edge there. And oh, and then at the back of his neck, there's a little bit of that light fringe to me where it looks like he's doing a full head turn. Oh, and there's also some blue. We need to get that in. There's some blue, dark blue along his neck coming through the feather. So you just want to put it in. You can put it in solid like that. And later you'll have a nice ground to wisp in some of those, those feathers. And then I've got a little black out on my palette. I'll mix some ultramarine blue and black in there. And I'm going to create that nice dark blue black color and just paint his little beak in like that. And go for a little journey here and try and watch his little eye pop out. Get a little more of the bluey black color and carry that along, looking at paying attention to the shape of his little head. And then there's some real dark down here. So this is ultramarine blue and a bit of black just to get that real dark. And you can get a little more of that and there's some of that in his, right in his little chest area, there's some of that. So I'm just gonna dab a little bit of that in. And again, I like to get those darks in first so that later I can get the, the light on top. And now I'm going to work on these feathers, but again, I wanna get in some of the darker feathers first so that we can easily show off his light feathers. So just get a little bit of ultramarine blue and you can use a little bit of that black to create that bluey black because there's quite a bit of um, a real dark, you know, black look on in there. The shadows are intense. So I'm just gonna use that, put that in there. And get that under there. And I just added a little bit more into that blue black pile just because it gets some of that up in there. And same with the tail. I might as well, while I'm adding the dark, um, add it where there's dark everywhere. And for the little feet, I'll just put in a little mark where there's some of his little claws showing here. Okay, so that's a good start on the block in there. So, so far we've got a lot of these layers. We've got all these really transparent. We've not added any white to any of these paint. All the paint we've put on has just been medium and a transparent color to our backdrop. 
Um, but I want to show you how to carry on with that. So I'm going to go back to a larger brush. And um, I've got this brush from Michaels. It's an eight Royal and Langnickel. And it's, I think it's got a little angle. Like it's a, I don't know what you call them, but I'm going to mix up some, now some color with white in it. So I'm going to just get my little mixing tray that's really messy, but this is pretty much pretty tacked up already, believe it or not. And I'm going to get, add some white into it because I want to start pulling out some of those lighter colors that are in the background. So if you want to keep it simple to start, just use some white and some brown oxide and you get a really pretty color. So I'm going to bring up my reference photo and you can see there's a lot of those nice um, light colors in the background that are just there. And you want to just sort of see about pulling some of those out. And what you want to do is just test a certain, you know, test an area, see, see if it's how bright it is. So I kind of like that. It's not super bright to start. So you can have fun with warming up to the idea. You can, you can, now this brush, I didn't realize it, but it's perfect for this because you can really, you know, work your, work your um, natural kind of organic shapes with it. So you can create a square edge, but you can easily create these tree, kind of tree hole shapes really simply with it. So that's one thing I just learned myself. I don't usually buy these, but I bought one the other day. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm just pulling out some, some shapes. Let me see if I can dim the lighting a little so you can maybe see. No, it didn't really help. So, so now that you kind of got the value, you could add a little bit of blue to that mix, get a kind of a gray color and just up where you have more of the blues, you could put in some sky holes that are gray. And I'm just picking out some tree. See, I'm leaving marks of like, you know, where, where a branch would be coming through. And you can do it as you can make a whole web if you want of these shapes, or you can just do one or two if you feel like you don't want it too busy in the background. And up here in the photo, I saw some more blue. So I'm gonna just add some cobalt into that mix and start up here. Let me just move this a little um, and put a few sky holes in with that cobalt and the cobalt is is really mixed with white and it's got some of the you know the brown oxide that was on there before so i get this nice warm grayish color so you'll see i'm just working in that color but now i'm shaping branches you see so it's kind of a reverse effect you're painting in and then you might have some more sky coming through here. And wherever you, wherever you uh, want to put it, uh, it doesn't necessarily matter because I'm just creating kind of a pattern you, you see going through the backdrop. So it's going up, there's some sky and then there's some blue here. And you can be aware of that, that you're, you know, you've got, it's not down here, you see. So you've kind of got some of that blue up there. Down here, I want to paint some, maybe some warmer 
colors go back to the brown oxide and white mix. So I'm going to maybe get red oxide and some white so I get more of that real warm background color that's actually that I actually see you know down in this area so see some of those those holes between the branches are a real kind of ready light you know tan orangey corally color can't really describe it but you can just try a few oops I mix that in a little better and I'm just kind of making some shapes as if I'm seeing them you know kind of through the branches Maybe you want to really get some light by the top of his head here. So go put a few of those spots up there, but you'll see I, you know, I'm creating branch shapes while I'm doing it. And remember, if you, if you later, we can, I can show you this. If you get too many and you think it's too, too much, you can glaze the whole thing again, glaze over the whole thing again. And you just kind of You'll get in the flow. I'm talking a lot while I'm doing it. So I'm thinking a little too much. If you're not thinking so hard, you'll do a better job of it. And so now I'll maybe shift to a little darker mix of that brown color, maybe add a tiny bit of this cobalt or add a little bit of ultramarine to it to gray it down. And whoopsies. Don't want that. <laughs> a bunch of cadmium red on my brush. That would have been a shocker. So I'll just go back and get some more brown. A little bit of uh, brown, white, and ultramarine blue, and just get a little, you know, bit of that going. See how that looks. So if it's too dark, no worries. I'm just gonna. Blend that a little. You might want some over here. Might put in a few strokes of that. And soft, I'm just softening some of that. So now you got some of that going, you're starting to see a new layer of a pattern here. So you might go, well, I want to add a little lighter blue now coming through the clouds. So get some cobalt and white. Depends how sunny a day you want. You can add more pure cobalt and white, but if you want kind of more of a gray day, uh, you can Add a little bit of that brown oxide so it's not so blue. But if you want to make it a little more blue and happier, just get some more of the pure cobalt and white, and you'll get a you know more vivid. And go go to your blue, that bluey gray that we put on, and just you can pop a few bright sky holes coming through. And, you know, you can switch to a smaller brush if you want to get a little more control. So 
So we're working on a few of those spots that you know you're starting to see just a little more action there. You can get a little more blue and put some blues in there. And as I go, I'm you know I'm shaping I'm shaping some of those uh, branches so. And um, you can look at your reference photo now and you can say, oh, but I think, you know, I want to darken some of the, the branches. So you go in and get, go back to your smaller brush. Let's see, that's a six. You could go back to a, the two and get some uh, brown oxide and a little ultramarine and go in and let's work on darkening some of these more important, um, put in some shadow, for example, on the one that this bird's standing on. and kind of bring out, emphasize some of these branches that are more in, in front. And you don't have to darken the whole branch, you know, just, I'm just darkening some spots on it. And then I'll light, I'll lighten some spots on it to show it off. And I'm going to darken some of these. And the beauty is I can paint almost right over top of that blue. I could take some of these marks and put them right over top of that blue area. So I'm getting a real, real variety. And just get mix up some more of the brown oxide and a little maybe some whatever blue you want to kind of gray it down cobalt or ultramarine will work and i've got a little bit of that medium on there so it's pretty transparent and i'll bring a few lines over over the background that i painted so starting to look more tied in with the rest of it. And then I'm gonna leave that for a little bit and go back to the bird. And I wanna do that because I wanna add a little more of some light value to the bird. So I'm gonna go back to my puddle of warm white, which was brown oxide, viridian, and white, and I'm going to add a little more white to it just to really bring out some of those features. So using that flat two brush, and I'm going to add some feathers just by dabbing around the edge. And I'm going to go over that dark blue line with some of those lines so that I get, and here the feathers go across this way. So I'm going to dab some of that white paint using the edge of my brush there. Get some more and go into the feathers there. And over here, blending the edge as I go. So there you see it's blending more and then I can get a little more white, maybe tiny dab of orange and get some real bright 
right? Where you get that around here. Some real bright white. Get some plain white and pure orange and you get a real bright And now you're starting to see we've got a, another lighter value here, which really starts to bring the bird up above the background. Get a little bit of this um, cobalt blue and then, whoops, I have too much water. If you get too much water, you'll drip it down onto your painting, so I just lifted it off there. And you can get a little bit of that blue and white, and just you can add that little you know, shiny part to the beak there. And then a little bit of that light cobalt and white and just kind of blend in the edge a little more. And then we don't want to forget this little bit of white over here. I'm just going to use that blue mix. I'm just going to get a little bit of that cad yellow light and a little bit of white. And I'm going to just dab on some real light feathers here. Just so you can see how how much more and I'm leaving that underpaint there. And as we go down the body, we're going to, we can add some of that cobalt to that mix and you'll get that kind of more greeny tone that the feathers get as you go down. And there's a greeny yellow there. So what you do is get cobalt and a little bit of that, that, um, cad yellow light and I mixed it right into that light puddle that we were using for here and I'll put some of that greeny blue highlight up on here because it the bird has a bit of a mix it's almost like the feathers right up there kind of mix and become a greeny but then they go to a real bright blue so I'm going to get the cobalt blue and white mix and you can add a tiny bit of that yellow to it and I'm going to make sure to leave some of that underpaint so that I you know show off some of those feather marks and if you paint over don't worry you can you can just paint some more of that dark in and then I'm going to use the edge of my brush and just put some of those light blue marks in for those side feathers that go down. So you want to get more on the tip of your paint brush and then bring down those long side feathers there. And as you get down to the end here, they get really bright. And so with your cobalt blue and white, just add some more white to the mix. So you get a real bright blue. And you can just take your brush and kind of do a light stroke like that. And you can add a few 
just a little bit of a highlight there. And then he's got some a little row of light white feathers in there. So I'm going to, you can use a smaller brush to put them in. I've got this little um, Simply Simmons number one, or you can use this, this number two would work too. So I'm just going to get a white and I'll just kind of mix it back into that white blue puddle that I had that I was using here. And I'm going to just kind of add a few little marks along the wing there for that blue. I mean, for that white. And then I'll get some cobalt blue and white. 